All right, welcome back. Okay, so we've written some code that can take our image, a UI image, and decode it into uh, an RGB kind of format that we can play with. And then we've written some more code that can take that and convert it back to a UI image. So let's make this a little more reusable. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's take it out of the playground now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the uh, RGBA pixel definition. I'm just going to copy that. Copy. And we're going to go over to our application and we are going to go uh, add new file. And we want this to be a Swift file. We're going to call it RGBA pixel. And that's inside our project. Good. I'm just going to paste that in here. We don't need that import anymore because everything is in our UI kit. Everything here is defined in the UI kit. Um, good. Okay, so that's part one. Now we want to bring across this code for doing the encoding and decoding. So let's create something called, let's go new file, Swift file, sounds good. And it's some kind of an image. Let's see, a decoded image. Actually, let's just call it image because we've already got a UI image and stuff like that. We're just going to call it image because this is the main thing that we're going to be playing with. Um, so what is an image? Well, it's either it's a class or a struct. I'm going to say class because we don't really care about the size. Class, I'm going to call it image, of course. Oops, there we go. So there we go, done, not quite. Um, so we want to be able to construct one of these by giving it a UI image. So let's go here and uh, I'm going to say, first of all, it's going to be public. This is a public class because we're going to be using it all over the place, I think. And we're going to go public init. And one of the initializers will take uh, uh, the source is image. Yes. Very cool. Okay, so now we're going to copy paste some stuff. Let's let's uh, turn that off. Let's turn that off. Okay, we want basically this code right down to where we define the pixels. Copy. So this is all code that we wrote earlier. Um, I'm going to put it here, but it's going to be a little different now. Uh, actually, let's let's not specialize it too much yet. So we know that basically our payload is this pixel buffer, right? That's the whole idea, is that once we've read the image, we have a pixel buffer that we can play with. So we're going to say let pixels and pixels are that pixel buffer. Great. Um, now, let's see. Oh, it's complaining about this because we haven't said import UI kit, which is where most of the good stuff comes from. And I think I got the capitalization wrong on that. What is it again? I'm just going to go back here. No, that was right. Oh, import. Haha. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. Much better. And next up, we know that we want a width and height. So we'll just go. Uh, now, we're going to have to have some of these variables shared between. Uh, this is the initializer, but we're also going to want a method that's going to produce an image, you know, from the result here. So. Uh, I know that I want to share the width and the height and probably some of these constants. Uh, okay, I'll do these two first and then we'll look at the other ones as we need them. So I'll go let height and we know that that's an int. We'll go let width and that's also an int. Cool. 
and that way I do not need a local variable that's assigned to the class. Oh, and in our code we call this image, which actually is just a fine name. We don't need to call it source. An image is an image. Oh, and it's not an image, it's a UI image. That's right. So once again, our initializer takes a UI image and returns an image. Uh, ooh, that's looking pretty good so far. Okay. Now, so from the looks of it, if we construct an image, we're able to pass a UI image and it's able to return this class that has all of our pixels in this data structure. It looks pretty good. Next thing up, we want to actually be able to create an image from our buffer. So we're going to go public and I love something like to UI image. I mean that's pretty explicit. Nice. And I'll just paste that code in that we originally wrote. Da! No need for this parameter, we'll just say return. Okay, and I'm not shocked here actually. Uh, let's see, public func. I'm not shocked about this. Okay, so just a little debate here. Do we want to store color space? And it's pretty small, so I'm going to say, you know, basically it's a reference to an object. So I'm going to say, yeah, sure, why not? Let's store the color space. So, um, yeah. Rather than making this a local variable, I'm just going to X that out. We're going to say when you create this object, you create the color space. And we're going to do the same thing for the bitmap info too, because we need that in both places. Nice. Okay, and now we let errors be our guide. Bits per component. Ah, that's right. Okay, now a funny thing about bits per component, it's pretty simple. Oh, no, wait a second. Bits per component is a constant. I was thinking about bytes per row, which we're going to get to next. So let's just move that here, and we can say static because it's never going to change. Um, but bits per component can we say static? You know what, I'm just going to say let. Uh, now, bytes per row. Yeah, this is where actually, yeah, I should have known that. Um, we have to do this inside our initializer because it is a dynamic quantity. And here, we just say, there we go, bytes per row. And that should just about do it. Oh, except I need to tell it that bytes per row is just an integer. Cool. Ooh, that's looking not too bad. Okay, now we want to verify that our image is actually doing what we think it is. Uh, so let's go back to our view controller. At the moment, we assign the UI image directly to, you know, the image we see here. Uh, let's change that. Let's, uh, we want to break that in two. Um, so, let's just write image as our thing. Here we go. So, I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, let image equals image. So that's our new class we just created. Uh, and I'm going to pass in this guy right here. Okay. Cool. So we have something called an image. Oh, what's it complaining about? Ah, optionality. Right, right, right. Okay. See, now we know that we're going to get an image back. This is a resource, so I'm just going to put an exclamation mark there. Um, 
course, what this will mean is if that the image isn't there, there's a runtime error. And that's a, just a decision that you have to make. Let's move on to... Okay, so now we've got our image. Now, oops, just did a copy-paste error. I'm going to say image dot to UI image. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Okay. So now it's not a direct thing. Now we take our UI image, we convert it to an image that we can play with. And we're not going to play with it yet. And then we take that UI image and we convert it back to an image. Okay, let's uh, do a quick run and see if we still get the smiley face. If everything's working okay, then this part is done. Come on, big smile. Come on, blue hair. Let's see. There it is. Good stuff. Okay, so this part is done. Let's move on to the next part, which is creating a filter.